going where I was going down in Mississippi. You walk one mile up a hill, then sideways for another mile, then through the cotton fields, and then you might see the school another mile off, amen? But you learned the basics of even going to school in that fashion. But think about it, when the first, one of the first lessons they tried to teach you was your A, B, C's. And everybody as a little child learned their ABCs. That's how we learned how to read and write. But do you remember the first time you could do it without any assistance? Right. A little child walks up to you and says, I know my ABCs. And that adult looks down and says, you do? They say, uh-huh. <laughs> And then you say, well, say him to me. And that baby push out his chest and say, A, B. And then you start singing it in a song. Yes. They got the melody down pat, don't they? Y'all might as well say, man, let y'all go to school. <laughs> we learned our ABCs because it was a necessity. Amen. It was a prerequisite for everything else that was going to happen in life. Yeah. That's why we're going to go to Romans, the 10th chapter. All right. And we're going to read verses 9 and 10. Mm -hmm. Romans, the 10th chapter, verses 9 and 10. Mm -hmm. We can stand for the reading of God's word for those that can. Romans the 10th chapter, verses 9 and 10. And when you have it, say amen. amen. And I'm reading from the ESV version. And it says, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Yeah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you when we bless your holy name. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. At this time, Father God, even as I stand here to preach your word, I ask that you hide me behind your cross in, your, in my stead. Leave your sweet Holy Spirit. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, my God, my Lord, my strength, and my redeemer. And Lord, if someone may ask, what must I do to be saved? These words can be a light unto their pathway where they can find a waiting door. Go in and sup with you. Lord, we'll forever give you the praise, glory, and honor. In the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Paul wrote Romans from the city of Corinth on his third missionary journey. This is about 57 years after the crucifixion of Christ. After completing his work on the eastern part of the Roman Empire, he hoped to travel to Rome and then to Spain. But first he had to go to Jerusalem and deliver the money he had paid for the church. The entire theme of Romans is on the revelation of God's judging and saving righteousness for his people. Right. But consider this, the righteousness that has been given, paid, and is afforded to each one of us. Yes, if a person is able to perform and understand what God has done, then they can make a statement of faith. Uh -huh. Think about it for a moment. We say we are Christians. All right. We say we believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the sweet Holy Spirit. Yes. Uh -huh. But how did we get to this point? Why have we gathered in this place today at this time, at this hour? Why do we say that Above all, nothing else matters except 
God and God all by himself. And that we have access to God because of everything that Jesus did on that old rugged cross. Why are we here today saying that we have a belief in a God we have never seen? Why do we have a belief about a man that died on a cross over 2,000 years ago? Why do we believe and confess that Jesus is the Son of the living God? Why do we stand in the face of opposition and disparity and, and ridicule by a world that is unkind to us about this very same person? Well, you have to go back to your ABCs of your Christian faith. As a little child, we was taught the ABCs of your Christian faith. It was admit, believe, and commit. But that's not what we're going to talk about in the ABCs today. Because in Romans, it talks about the renunciation process that is given by God. And this renunciation is that we are willing to set aside our present habits of thought, our present view, and our prejudices that we have in this world. Right. Realize and understand that all are welcome in the house of God. Yes, Lord. Realize and understand that we're all sinners yes, yes, Lord. that have fallen short yes. of the glory of God. Yes. The Bible says there's none perfect, no, not one. Yes, and, and for those high and mighty and zealous Christians that think they've made it you ain't made it yet. Because you ain't got to the judgment yet. And, and here's the thing. And just because you're a Christian don't mean that you don't get judged when you get up out of here. Second Corinthians 5 and 10 says that every man must appear before the judgment seat of Christ to give him an account of what he has done in this body. Whether it be good or whether it be bad. See, uh, it don't matter whether you up here with me and Reverend Major or you're back there with the ushers. Everybody, everybody. got to stand in front of the Almighty God. Everybody. I'm trying to get into heaven just like you. And you better watch out because I do need some button too. Yeah, all right. You know how you used to button in school? Yeah. Jump in front of somebody? And before you know it, you're going to start in a fight with folks back there. You, ain't, you act like you ain't did nothing. I don't know what they fight for. I'm just standing in line. Yeah. But here's the first one. A is the activating event. The activating event. And what I'm going to describe to you today is an aspect of looking at irrational thinking. It's used in the clinical world for trying to get people to realize where their thinking has gone astray. Just because you're thinking it, don't make it right. It don't make you right. Amen? We have generational teachings that have been sent down to us from our forefathers that though they worked in that time, they weren't the best teaching in the world. Like whoopings. I thought the worst thing my father ever did to me was gave me a whooping. Right. Uh huh. He believed in Southern comfort. Yeah. <laughs> and that Southern comfort came in the size of his waist. Yeah. 42 inches of hard lap. He was educating me in the best fashion he thought was possible. And then he was going to educate me with this statement. This is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. If that ain't a bunch of irrational thinking, I don't know what it is. Because you want to see how much it's going to hurt? Let's switch places. But back then, we didn't talk to our parents like that. Kids gone crazy now. If I was told my father, you better not. He said, you just watch and see what's going to happen next. I thought about what I would say out of my mouth before I said something to my mama and dad. Uh -huh. Rational thinking said, if you want to see tomorrow, you better shut up. Mm -hmm. 
My granddaughter said something to me the other day. I said, what you say? She said, oh, Papa, you know I was playing. I said, don't play with me. Yeah. Yeah. Get her back to eight basics, amen? Yeah. The activating is this. Many of us are taught our ABCs of Christian faith to understand this term. First of all, admit. But before you can admit, there must be an activating event to get you to look at your situation and understand that there's something that needs to change. All right. Before you can admit to something, you got to look at your situation and say, what is wrong with me and my life right now? Now, 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 before you walk down that aisle and before you made your, your confession, you look at your life and you say, you know what? Something is wrong. It don't matter if you were well, uh, born into a family that had all gold and silver spoons. It don't mean if you were born and you lived in the project. It don't mean that you if you got a master or a doctor degree. It don't mean none of that. It did not help you from your life going crazy. Come on, Amen. Yes. There's millions of people with higher education living under bridges in America right now. People with masters and doctor degrees. This activating events is something that creates a trigger of irrational thought. In most cases, this is a negative response. You know what? I've been living like this so long, something got to be better than how I'm living now. I ain't never had so much peace in all my God-given life as I got right now. My biggest worry in the world right now is what I'm going to eat for dinner. You hear what I say? Uh -huh. And I don't want it to be dinner from yesterday. It's got to be fresh and new. Look, I was raised with 14 people in the house. Okay? I'm the oldest out of 14 children. Ain't what no leftovers. You better get to the pot before you got left out. Right. Okay? And so now I didn't get used to no leftovers. It was a new meal each and every day. Even if the beans was was new, that I ate them brand new beans, amen. Look, and put a neck bone next to it. I didn't like neck bone, but I thought on it anyway. <laughs> Give me a neck bone now, I'm mad. I like boxing. That's too much fight <laughs> to get that little bitty meat out that little hole. <laughs> you gotta make all the grand there you to get you tired before you get to the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> they say it. They say it's good. But look, it's gotta be like a state, ready and able. <laughs> What we're looking at is our irrational thoughts. Yeah. Our life at the time we come to accept Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I don't know if you remember your day like I remember my day. I remember my day sitting on the porch and my life was in turmoil. I was on the verge of a divorce. My kids were afraid of me. And I was doing things in the street that nobody should be doing. All right, all right. All right. Been there, now. And I felt hopeless and lost. Yeah. And all that time and all that hustling in the street, I ain't got nothing to show for it. Amen. Yeah, Wasn't nothing to see $50,000 on the table at night. Yeah, that irrational living, that irrational belief. Uh -huh. But one day, I found myself Come on, tell it. sitting on the porch, tell it, crying and begging God. Yeah, this was my activating event. Yeah. And just like the man saying, Lord, if you get me out of this yeah, and clean up, what I messed up and start me all over again. I'll do anything you say. And, and, and I don't know which was falling harder, the tears from my face or the rain in the sky. I went into the house and I was sleeping on the couch. 
house. My wife was sleeping upstairs. I said we was on the verge of a divorce. And I laid down and I had what we call our call, my call into the ministry. And when I woke up, I knew automatically I was a changed man. See, when you get saved, ain't nobody got to tell you you saved. You already know that you saved. Yes, sir. But I had this newfound belief that everything was going to be all right. But just because I had that activating event does not mean I was ready to accept what God was offering. Yes, Lord. So we go to the next part of the story. All right. B is the belief event. Yeah, okay. B is the belief event. Yeah. One day a lady came into the gym ready to work out. You could tell she knew how to come to the gym. She had the sweat band on her head and she had the band on her wrist and she had the gym clothes. And she went through that crowd. Went over there and started stretching, bent down and touched her toes. One or two times. Saw the bench over there and grabbed her some barbells. Oh. Start pumping. Yeah, right. Did that about five times. Put them down. Stood up and did it with a loud woof. Woof! <laughs> That's enough for the day. <laughs> she knew the basics about exercising, but she did not have the belief to follow through. All right. And for many Christians today, when they come down that aisle and they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, before they can start walking according to the will of God, they leave before they get the rest of the instructions. So they believe is no longer strengthened. Realize and understand that when you get saved, you got all the faith you ever going to get. Because from this point to salvation, you got to grow in your faith. You don't get no more faith. You don't get no more Jesus. You got all you ever going to get. But you got to grow in the Lord and believe yes, that he is the son of the almighty God. Yes, yes. Here Paul, Paul is telling if you confess with your mouth yeah. that Jesus uh -huh. is Lord. See, first of all, in order to get to God, you got to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Yeah, you are. Come on. And he said, no one gets to the Father but by me. See, you can't get into my house through my child. My child can answer the note and say, Daddy, so-and-so at the note, but they're going to let me know who at the note, and I'm going to say, let him in or shut it tight. Y'all know how y'all used to do the Jehovah Witnesses. See them coming down the street, got pulled the curtains, everything. Tell them to be quiet. You get mad when the child won't shut up. Then the kids shut up. Now you just let them know you're in the house. But when you come to Christ, you have to believe that He is. Lord, that everything that he did on the cross was for you. When I accepted Jesus Christ and I accepted my calling, I went back to Chicago because I thought I had gone crazy. Because first of all, God would not pick somebody like me that did all this in the world. What even 30 good and messed up beyond repair yeah. that no matter who I talked to, they did not like me. See, y'all see the other side of salvation that God working on. Y'all see good past the hill, but any power was a hoop to deal with. Yeah. Look at my wife shaking her head. Show love. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not a glorified my sin of past. I'm just telling you what God did in my life and what he can do in your life. That when you think you 
and he said, okay, that's fine and good. I said, but I can't be no pastor. Yeah. He said, why? I said, because I can't sing. <laughs> Pastor Henderson was about a size bigger than me. And he sat back in that chair just like the chair I got in my office. He said, that's good. I said, what do you mean that's good? He said, God didn't call you to sing. He called you to preach. He said, get in your way. Too many people, too many people are stepping out of their lane that God has them in and forgetting that belief statement that God put them in. All right. Okay? Of all the people that should have known that Jesus was the Son of God, yes. the scribes should have known who he was because they had the law. They had the books of Moses. They had the teachers. They were the chosen yeah, sure. of God. Folks today get in church think they're the chosen of God and they don't want to run everybody else down. Right. Because they think they learn more scripture than anybody. Yeah. Ready to say, you know, since I've been here, I'll say it to my dying day. Learning scripture is good, but if you ain't going to live it, that don't mean nothing. Right. If you can't live the scripture that you shooting on somebody, then keep it in your mouth. Right. Yeah. I ain't get too many amen on that one, did it? The process of belief is not some mere emotional responses. Oftentimes, some people come down and accept Jesus Christ off of a good song. Right. Off of a feel-good moment. But it has to be more than that. It has to be deep. It has to be rooted. And it has to be grounded in God and the Word of God. Yes, sir. Yes. Romans chapter 10 has more passages, uh, sightings out of the Old Testament than any other book in the Bible. Come on, right. yes, sir. What Paul wants the Roman to know and to be clear is that the generations before were not guaranteed to get into heaven. Just because you were of the tribe of Israel does not mean you was going to heaven. Right. All right. And if anybody was messing up more than these folks, right. I mean, these folks was messing up every day. It seemed like God said prophet after prophet after prophet after prophet. You look, you even have one. So I ain't going in there. <laughs> See, I don't get what happened to them folks. What if God's preacher did not care about your soul? Come on. And worried about more than how much money came in the church. Yeah. yeah. How much money going out the church. Right. Uh, we'll fight over a nickel. Yes, sir. In the church, but we'll let somebody go to hell with their eyes wide open. Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. One day, the, there was a credit card sent to this person's home. It arrived in the mail, in the regular mail. The credit card stated that you have been pre qualified for a $20,000 credit limit. All right. Mm, that's not good, don't it? To that inches slap you upside the head. This meant that the person question in question had to determine to ex accept it or not accept it by what the company was offering. A lot of people forget that part about being pre-qualified. Yeah, yeah. They put that number out there to entice you to apply and then give you a two thousand dollar credit limit. But Christ did something else. He said, you are pre-qualified to go into heaven. All you have to do is believe. Yes, sir. And everything that was offered you, you will get. But there will be someone that says, I do not want to go into heaven. I want to do it on my own. Yes, sir. They're going to throw away their salvation. Luke 11, 52 say, Woe to you lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You did not enter yourselves, and you are hindered those who were entering. 
Sometimes people think they have scripture so figured out that they can give it to someone without hurting them. You don't need a Bible and a commentary under your arm to tell somebody about the Word of God. It's the life that you live. That's the best Bible somebody's going to read. By what you do. Yeah. I've seen people confused about the Word of God on so many occasions. I get people that come in and, and recite Scripture and then they have Scripture misquoted mm -hmm. and then misunderstood. Yeah. 1 Corinthians 12 and 3 says, Therefore I want you to understand that no one is speaking in the Spirit of God ever says Jesus is accursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except the Holy Spirit. Once you believe <coughs> then you can accept the offering of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So what we have now is the activating event and then next we have the belief event. Lastly, see the consequences or the consequence event. The consequence event. Our ABCs of our youth said commit. But if you read Romans 10, 9, and 10, if you confess with your mouth yeah. that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Yes. Yes. And then look at what verse 10 says. For with the heart, yeah. one believes and is justified. And with the mouth, one confesses and is saved. In Romans chapter 5, starting around verse 10, we, we I'm 21, I'm sorry, Romans uh, chapter 5, around verse 21, starts the justification section. Paul begins to explain how you are justified in the Lord. Realize it's not anything that you do, but it's all about what Jesus Christ has done on the cross. So, when we look at this, we're not looking at the credo of simply commit, but looking at the consequences. If you don't believe, then what are the consequences for your eternal soul? Right. What is the result of what will happen to you once you leave this side of the Jordan? There is a price to be paid for those that believe and don't believe. Galatians 3.22 says, But the scripture imprisoned everything under sin, so that the promise of faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Verse 23 of Galatians 3, Now before faith come, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. Verse 24 of the same chapter. So then the law was our guardian until Christ come, came in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. For Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many as you were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. I remember after I had talked to Pastor Henderson and I came back, it was, still wasn't good enough for me to accept my calling. So I called my friend who I consider my brother. I said, man, get over here. I need to talk to you. And we never refused each other, even to this day. And he came and pulled up in front of the house and I said, look, I'm going to tell you something that sounds very crazy, so don't laugh at me. I said, I believe I got called into God's ministry. And he got silent. You know how them old gangsters take the Newport cigarette? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. <clears throat> took one out. Because you know he had his bus from the bottom. Lit and said these words. Bruh. You may be the very one to help save my soul. And as I stand here today, this is coming true. 
I had to give in there. But I did not know where to go. Yeah. But I thank God for a praying wife. Yeah. Yeah. My wife has been in church since the day I met her. Yeah. And I told her that night I got that call and I said, I'm going to tell you something. And it's going to sound crazy. And I told her about my vision of my calling. And she said these words. Nettie, who was her godmother, had that very same dream about you three weeks ago, she told me. And then I said to her, where do I go now? She said, I know two pastors on my job. One was Pastor Harold Johnson, who licensed me in the ministry. And then Pastor Albert Walker, who was my father in the ministry. Pastor Johnson got me started. Pastor Walker showed me my walk of faith. Told me the consequences of the ministry. Told me how to love God's people even when they don't love you. Yes, Lord. Showed me how to be faithful to my wife. How to be raised, how to raise my children. Right. But the one thing he told me, he said, without the sweet Holy Spirit, None of it matters. He said, because one day you will have to stand in front of an almighty God to give into account of how you treated God's people. My mother said, get all the education you want. But without the Holy Spirit, it don't mean nothing. She told me, I don't need your school education to understand who God is. I don't need your theology, your apologetics, your hermeneutics. She said, God said it, I believe it, that's all. That's it. Simple faith. That's it. And you've heard me say since my mother died that when before she went home to the Lord, she said the angels are calling me. The angels are calling me. The next day she died and went home to the Lord. The consequences is too great and too grave not to wonder where you're going to spend the rest of eternity. The consequences are too dire even on this side of the Jordan to show God how you live. This is practice right now, y'all. This is just a rehearsal. Yes, God. But one day, when we close our eyes for the last time, our tongues have been glued to the top of our mouth. And when we give up this body to go stand in front of an almighty God, to tell God what we did, I just want to be able to say, God, I did my very best. I, I, I was talked about and I was ridiculed and there was days I wanted to give up. But I remembered everything that you showed and did before we, before I died. You showed me how you went from judgment hall to judgment hall. You showed me how you let them beat you unceasingly. You showed me how you laid down your life, nobody took it. But you laid it down on yourself. You let them put Spikes in your hand and in your feet. Uh -huh. You let them raise you yeah. up on an old rugged cross. Yeah. You, you, you knew that you came for a reason. Yeah. You knew that if you had not got on the cross, on. that all men would be damned forever. Yeah. But here today, I'm here to tell you, yeah. because of what Jesus did on that old rugged cross, yeah. we don't have to suffer the consequences of death. No more. You can say to death, where is your sting? Where is your victory? Because I don't know about you, but when I lay down for the last time, I'm going to walk into heaven and hear my mama say, here comes my child. He came up the rough side of the mountain, but he made it anyway. Y'all don't hear me. The consequences yes. is too great yes. 
Yes. Yes. Yes. Ephesians 3, 10 and 11 says, so that through the church, the man manifold of wisdom of yes. God yes. might be now be made known yes. to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. Right. This was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Yes, yes. Realize from the baby that's sitting here to the oldest person in this church right. that if you have not made a confession of faith to Jesus Christ, yeah. you have an opportunity today. 